morning everybody welcome to Burniston Methodist virtual service and we hope you uh, have a good week and we hope you enjoy the rest of the service today so let's just come before the Lord and prepare our hearts to receive what he has for us today and um, I'm going to start off reading um, a poem which is uh, Amy Kendall sent around onto the, the ladies WhatsApp group yesterday and it's um, a real blessing and a word of hope in these times. So it's got starts off with a word of scripture. For the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And that's from Revelation. And a man called Glenn Scrivener has written this poem to um, lead us a bit deeper into those words. And also, it's like a prayer to pray for our world. For our anxious little realm, for the fears that overwhelm, there is a throne. For mistakes we can't forget, and the sins that still beset, we have a lamb. For our lost and lonely hearts, for our gnarled and tangled paths, we have a shepherd. For our dry and listless souls, and our thirst for being whole, we have a stream. For regret and ravaged years, for all sweet and bitter tears, we have a father. For treks through burning sands to our home in promised lands, this hope Till all is done, our God, the three in one. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can meet you wherever we are. You love us and you embrace us. And so, Lord, we ask that you will be with us by your Holy Spirit throughout this service. And Lord, Thank you so much, Jesus, that you came to forgive us, that we could meet with the Father and be filled with your Spirit. Lord, so bless this time today, we ask, and be with us all this day and throughout the week. Amen. God bless you. Hello, today's Bible reading is Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you a rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes life can just feel like hard work. Like we're dragging around a whole rucksack of stuff. But the things we're carrying around aren't necessarily things you can see. All sorts of things can hold us down. Guilt, worries, illness, stress, 
frustration, fear, just the daily grind of life. But the wonderful and amazing thing is that because of the cross, we can unburden all of these things to God and be transformed. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me. Three simple words. Three simple words which express a truth that takes us a lifetime to understand and accept. Three simple words which carry all of the theology and all of the doctrine that the finest minds have taken twenty centuries to unpack. Three simple words without which all of that theology and all of that doctrine is actually worthless wrapping paper around an empty space holding an even emptier promise. For these three simple words are an invitation to a relationship with Jesus. And in this they embody the greatest concept of Christianity. That at its very core, Christianity is first, foremost and always a relationship with Jesus. It's as simple as that. It really is. When Jesus says, come to me, it's not a call to embrace a system of religion or a set of doctrines. When he says, come to me, it's not an invitation to do church or follow a charismatic big-name pastor. Still less is it an invitation to accrue status, prosperity or power. Belonging to Jesus precedes our believing, doing or building anything. When Jesus says, come to me, it's an invitation to a relationship built upon prayer, because prayer is being close with Jesus. When Jesus says, come to me, he is expressing so simply and so clearly the purpose at the heart of the incarnation. God wants to be in a relationship with us, and in Jesus he invites us to do this face to face. It's really that simple. Accepting his invitation is to step into new life, 
Without this relationship, Christian faith is truly nothing but empty religion jazzed up with good intentions. Without this relationship with Jesus, Christian faith is hopelessly bogus, a spiritual carapace, devoid of power, concealing an emptiness within that will not go away. So come to me is an imperative which expresses all the compassion that Jesus has for our hurting world. It's a demonstration of his empathy, intimacy and openness. It's a declaration of divine solidarity flowing from the yearning heart of God's grace. Responding to Jesus when he says, come to me, is the place where Christian faith begins. Because Jesus reaches out to each one of us and he never stops doing so. He's doing it right now and he does it without exception. Come to me all. Now who would think that one word could make so much difference? Yet that word all does. The offer of new life in Jesus is universal for everybody, for all time, with no exceptions. That little word all is breathtaking, subversive, radical, revolutionary, astounding, incredible and wonderful in equal measure. It freights the entirety of God's boundless grace right into the human heart. It is the mind-blowing and shame-busting convincer that this invitation is meant for even such as me. Now the four alls of the Methodist Church take this to heart with focus and gusto. All people need to be saved. All people can be saved. All people can know that they are saved. And all people can be saved to the uttermost. So come to me all is the divine purpose that shapes church. It is a non-bounded statement of intent by Jesus. Church is how we express this intention so that everyone around us in society can experience this awesome relationship for themselves. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The people Jesus sees around him are weary because they are burdened. They're burdened by Roman imperialist oppression, burdened by persecution, burdened by crushing poverty, burdened by disease and illness, burdened by a religion that so often seems designed to exclude them, burdened by the unfair and unjust socio-economic reality that for them there is no hope of levelling up. There never has been and there never will be and they're burdened by what it is to be human. The people Jesus sees around him look just like you and me, because we recognise many of these ancient burdens in their contemporary expression today, for we too are burdened and weary, not least by lockdown. We are likewise only too mindful of all that bears down upon us, everything that crushes the life out of our humanity. In looking for an image to express this, I discovered some photos online of the memorial to the persecuted in Komarno, Slovakia. It brilliantly captures this sense of weariness and burden of which Jesus speaks. So let's take some time to find ourselves in the sculpture. And in a world where racism, economic injustice, virulent nationalism, economic and sexual exploitation, political corruption and state-sponsored violence are rife, this memorial to the persecuted is chillingly apposite. It's a ghastly reminder of those who always suffer, for it bears eloquent testimony to the appalling burdens placed onto ordinary people the world over. This is the human predicament, and to all who are weary and burdened, Jesus promises rest. Come to me, 
all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This is the precious promise at the heart of all our prayers. It is an invitation to lay down the emotional and psychological baggage that we all carry too. These are the inner burdens which so weary us, the baggage we've lugged around for as long as we can remember, the burdens that never seem to leave us, but which we long to be rid of. There, in a suitcase labelled shame and guilt, we carry that most intimate and private dead weight of all. And Jesus looks at us so lovingly and simply says again and again and again, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And St Augustine, the Algerian who converted to Christianity aged 31 and became Bishop of Hippo, a maritime city which is now modern-day Anaba in Algeria, writing his confessions at the end of the 4th century, brilliantly and famously gets to the heart of this promise. He says... You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. God our Creator has made us to be in relationship with God, and Jesus offers us the only way to fully enter into the fullness of all this relationship promises. Without this relationship, it is as though we are unceasingly restless, because we're always searching to fill a void within us. A piece of the jigsaw of our being, of who we are, is missing, and we struggle to find it and feel uneasily lost and restless without it. When I first went to church as a 19-year-old student, it was precisely like this for me. It felt as though I had found a piece of the jigsaw that had been missing. Yet how many of us keep on trying to fill that emptiness with things that actually have no prospect of ever satisfying our yearning? Consumer capitalism is based on this very fallacy. We keep on trying to put the wrong piece in the wrong place, but that restlessness within stays stubbornly unfulfilled. You have made us for yourself, O Lord and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Jesus offers us a relationship, the only relationship, that can possibly fulfil this need, fill that void, and enable us to feel whole. Our lives and his are made to fit together. So when Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He offers us the precious piece of the jigsaw for which we have been searching. And he keeps on offering it to us, time and time again, whenever the void of our longing and hurting opens up. He invites us to take the promise of prayer in our hands and place it where our need and the need of others is greatest. And it is guaranteed to fit because it is tailor-made by God for us. And church is the place where we join together as one in Jesus, each of us having our own distinctive yet familiarly shaped relationship with him. This is what binds us together. We are one in him. And notice how by definition there is always space for others to fit in. By their very nature the relational pieces are shaped to welcome others. Our being in relationship with Jesus is designed to enable others to become attached to him too. So evangelism should be the most natural process in the world. Jesus then goes on to say this, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Now, this is one of those precious moments in the gospel where Jesus actually describes himself. He is gentle and humble in heart. How many people, I wonder, would describe God like that? Yet here is our proof. Jesus, the human face of God, is gentle and humble in heart. And it is from that place of absolute strength and total vulnerability that he invites us to come to him. As the New Testament understands so well, such love casts out fear. And we need not be fearful of the demands that being in relationship with Jesus necessarily brings either. The whole point is that we shall find rest for our souls, not exchange one torment for another. In this, Jesus is quite clear. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And that word easy carries the connotation of being made to measure. The yoke is light precisely because it is made uniquely for us. And it is light precisely because Jesus shares the burden too. We are yoked to him. He takes the strain. He shoulders the load. He carries what we cannot bear. We are no longer on our own, bereft, left to our own devices. When Jesus says, come to me, all of that changes forever. We are no longer alone. Through being in relationship to Jesus, we discover that Jesus himself describes the pearl of great price and it's that relationship with him. Through the promise of prayer, we find that peace which the world cannot give. And that is something that Donald Trump can't selfishly buy up and hoard to the exclusion of the rest of the world. It can't be commodified by the wealthiest 1% of the world's population to the detriment of the 99%. It can't be denied to the poorest by world trade deals that are unfair, biased and rigged. It can't be cynically withheld from those whom we despise. Richard Desmond, take note. Jesus, gentle and humble, crucified and risen Christ, is the great leveller whose love is the most precious gift anyone can ever accept. And by being bound to him, strengthened by him and made whole in him, we join God's radical and revolutionary movement. United in Jesus and in the power of the cross, we are God's chosen means to transform the world through love, that our common humanity, together, will truly bear the likeness of God. This is the promise of prayer that embraces the whole world. For you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May prayer bless you with that greatest truth of all. Go well and go gently, everyone. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our time of prayer. Thank you, David, for sharing God's word. And thank you, Lord, that somehow when we put these services together, although we are all separated as we're doing it, into it all comes together as you orchestrate what you want to bring to your people. In this time of prayer, I want to use God's word powerfully for myself, actually, and for all of us. I don't know about you, but when I want to cast my cares, I find I cast my cares on the Lord and then they come straight back to me. But how in lockdown, in the need that we've had of the uncertainty and all the things that have happened to, to me and to you, declaring God's word has been such a powerful tool. And I've taken just one scripture a week at a time 
and declared that in my circumstances. So I'm going to use some of the scriptures because I think they're so pertinent in how we cast our cares. So anyway, let's pray and let's be still before the Lord with so many scripture about, about being still. Be still and know I am God. And the one that came up this morning in my morning reading was from Exodus. Uh, it's when the Israelites are just are, are facing the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army is behind them. And maybe some of us, as we come out of lockdown, are feeling like that. We're not sure where we're going. We can't go back into the safety of being in our own homes, but we have to come out. And maybe that, that's the case. But this scripture is so powerful. It just says here, very simply, Moses said to the people, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. So let's have a moment of being really still before the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can dwell in the shelter of the Most High, that we can find refu refuge and rest in the sa and safety in the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you that we can say, the Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Thank you, Lord, that you've that you are with us in our circumstances. Come Holy Spirit of God now and fill each one of us with your gentle touch, with your strength and comfort from on high and with your wisdom. Lord, you know each one of our circumstances each one of us can declare, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can walk through COVID-19. I can walk through grief. I can walk through loneliness. I can walk through a return to work. I can walk through this day. I can walk through caring for people. I can walk through your joy that you give us, Lord. Let's take a moment now to consider what is it that we can say, I can do through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, we know that you have loved us with an everlasting, all-encompassing love. You have loved us before we were born. You love us through each day of our lives. And nothing, nothing can separate us from that love in Christ Jesus. So Jesus, we come before you. We come before the throne of grace and acknowledge how much you love us. How much as we shelter in the arms of the Father, we can receive your love. Love that heals our sadness. Love that heals our diseases. Love that touches us with gentleness. Love that we can yoke to because you are gentle and humble in heart and as we become humble before you acknowledging you as our saviour Jesus that's when we can slip on that yoke so we just have a moment to receive the beauty and the gentleness of the Lord's love for each one of us As we pray, let's just think of those who we want to pray for that need a touch of God's love. For those who we know that may need to be brought closer to Jesus to know him as their saviour. Let's just think about those people and pray that the Lord will bless them and pour his light of truth upon them right now. Those of us who are fearful now, 
There is no fear in love because perfect love casts out all fear. When the Lord is with me, I have no need of fear. What can mere man do to me? Lord, you've commanded us, you've encouraged us, you've exhorted us to not be afraid. So this day, let us declare together, I will not be afraid. I will not live in fear because I have the Lord's love with me and I can do all things that you require me to do or want me to do or lead me to do, Lord, through Christ who strengthens us. So let us say, to, the, the next thing I want to think about is how we trust, can trust in you now, Lord. We have that position before you. We have your love. Let us trust in the Lord in all our ways. Let's bring that mighty trust, a seed of trust. Trust in the Lord in all your heart, in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Lord, it's that path that we have to walk on. As we trust in you, as we take hold of your hand, Lord, and walk in that way, make it straight for us. Each one of us make our path straight this week. Let us not look to the left or the right, but just follow Jesus. Be encouraged and uplifted by the Spirit. And I pray for each one of us that you would give us great wisdom in our walk this week, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can receive these gifts of comfort, of strength, of wisdom, of love, of trust in you. And know that whatever our circumstances, we can walk with you. Let's have just a moment imagining in our minds with the Lord how he's going to walk us through our circumstances in the next few days. Lord, thank you. Thank you for blessing us with this time. And as we pray for ourselves, can we also pray for our church? Our strategic prayer this week is probably very apt. As we've been given, now the go-ahead to open up churches, Lord, we want to be wise. Your ways are not our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. And your plans are not our plans. Lord, may you give your leaders and stewards great wisdom in how to start thinking about now we've been given the legal freedom, whether we've got the godly direction in what to do. So our strategic prayer is to pray for the vision, to pray for the vision of our church, to pray for your will and your purpose to be done at Berniston Church, Lord. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And we want your vision now very much in all we do. In all our, everything that the church is, Lord, it is your church. So we pray for your vision and your wisdom. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. And we pray just briefly for the church as a whole. Lord, in these challenging times, may your church be revived. May your church grow according to your purpose and your will, Lord, throughout our, our, in our local area, throughout our nation and throughout the world. Bless us, Lord, today as the body of Christ. And I want to finish with declaring some scripture. Great peace 
of those who love your word, your law. Nothing shall offend them or cause them to stumble. So keep us upright, Lord. Be the lifter of our heads and the blesser of our way. God bless you all. In Jesus' name, we bring these prayers to you before your throne of grace, Lord. Amen. Amen. And the people all said, Amen. <laughs>